Our chapel speaker today has been recommended by a longtime faculty member in the College of Business, Dr. Don Diffinay. He's professor of economics and director of our Belden Center for Private Enterprise Education. And so here he is, one of the few people qualified to hide his own Easter eggs. Please welcome Mr. Nerdly Greenback. My name is Nerdly Greenback Patriot. Oh, sure, people are looking at me and asking, who's the macadamia? I have been called the Niagara of words and the Sahara of thought. I am so hyper I make coffee nervous. Friendly, dogs come up and pet me. Around Harding University, I've been called a big thinker by people who lisp. Freshman, you deserve a bouquet for choosing Harding University, and that is why I extend to you this laurel and hearty greeting. Sure, a lot of people are giving advice on how to act proper. Well, with a, what about etiquette for underachievers? is what I ask you. If you are like me, and I know I am, just, just because nobody is teaching manners to the underachiever, we are not going to stand for that lying down. I'm Nerdly Greenback Patriot. I'm here to, to say that because millions of people were born losers with a little less effort, so can you be. No, no brain science here. In the past, when it came to social opportunities, they were right under our noses and we blew them. Growing up, my teachers were so strict. How strict were they? We had to ask permission to sweat. In, in high school, I signed up for shop classes, thought I'd get course credit for visiting local malls. Was I surprised? I nerdly greenback patriot say underachievers may be short on couth, but they can still go to the foot of the class. So let's start with some hints on personal grooming. Grow your eyebrows long and then comb them backwards. Greet people in the elevator with a warm handshake and wish them a pleasant ride. After the door closes, turn to the person next to you, stare glassy-eyed and say in a tormented monotone voice, I must find a new host body. Bring, bring a bar of soap to the health club whirlpool. Join Exercisers Anonymous. Then when you feel like working out, you call a buddy and he talks you out of it. Brush the dandruff off other people's shoulders. Polish your car with earwax. And what can you, the underachiever, do to be a hit with children? You ask me. Make scary faces at babies. Tell little children the truth about Santa Claus. Cross December 25th off the calendar and tell them they slept through Christmas. Read, read children the storybook about the little engine that couldn't. Leave a note from the tooth fairy say, saying, sorry, out of cash. Act like a dweeb in front of your teenager's friends. Ha, ha, ha. Re repeatedly tell them how things were in your day. Pick up a Etch-A-Sketch and announce that you think you've gone online. Is what you can do. And what a, about home, home life? What is the least you, an underachiever, can do? Start with a, each day with a smile and get it over early. If you do not, do not come from a dysfunctional family, make one up. When, when somebody says, have a nice day, Respond, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Invite people for dinner and then not be home. <laughs> Avenge yourself as a parent. Live long enough to be a problem to your children. Never argue with your wife when she's tired or rested. Never go to bed angry. One night we stayed up for three days. Are you tired of these self-styled leaders? Probably not. You, the underachiever, have options that do not include rocket surgery. Sneer at people that really try. Answer a question with a question. Or say, that, that is the way we do it here on Earth. 
Ask weird people, what is the name of the planet in your galaxy? And when someone pays you a compliment, ask for a receipt. It's what you can do. Go on about the theory of relativity. The more people discover your money, they'll show up as a relative, or words to that effect. Well, I nerdly greenback patriot ask, what about mental gymnastics for the underachiever without making you a social leopard? P play mind games with people. Develop a truly blank look. When you do something bad, use somebody else's name. Tell engaged student couples that two can live as cheaply as one, if you are a schizophrenic. <laughs> Tell discouraged people about Brahms, who took seven years to compose his famous lullaby. Kept falling asleep at the piano. It's what happened. Tell people you admire they started out with nothing and still have most of it left. <laughs> Say you're sorry in a cheerful, lifting voice. Ha ha. Ha. Tell about your uncle who drank a can of varnish. He died, but he had a nice finish. <laughs> what about finding a career where you can college your way through work? You ask me. Become a university professor so you can talk in other people's sleep. And a yawn is really a silent boo. Get a degree in psychoceramics so that you can be a certified crackpot. Tell students on the first day of class that you have a, a tender heart, a good conscience, the heart of a little boy, which you keep in a jar on your desk. <laughs> have them think of you not as your boss, but whose friend is always right. And when your students ask you a difficult question, tell them, hey, there were two schools of thought and I was absent both days. Give lectures. Your notes become the students' notes without going through the minds of either of you. Use Shakespearean lingo. Good person, me thinks tis folly, the business plan thou doth advocate. Rebuked is thy economic forecast. Tis the work of a knave and a rascal. Remember that not all faculties have their faculties. Anybody with half a mind such as me knows that. Raise your hand if you believe in audience participation. Okay. As a underachiever student, do not try to get more out of college than yourself, is what I say. Instead of drinking at the fountain of knowledge, just gargle a little bit. Tell sweetmates that someday they may find themselves, and then they will be disappointed. <coughs> when professors ask you what is the heart of the world's problems, ignorance or apathy, you, you respond, I do not know and I do not care. <laughs> on, on term papers, proofread carefully to see if you any words out. Watch out for survey courses that require oral report, a public ridicule system to teach humility. And what is humility anyway? The arrogance of the humble. Do, do not kid yourself. Rejection of your schoolwork is rejection of you. Take it personally. Then there's Murphy's student law of thermodynamics. Things get worse under pressure. And there's the, the registrar's law of truth or consequences. If it is not in the computer, it does not exist. Well, I nerdly Greenback Patriot ask, what about recreation for the underachiever? Name your ball team the possums, because you play dead at home and get killed on the road. <laughs> See what it takes to get the lifeguard to blow his whistle. Wear, wear golf shoes on newly polished floors. Play handball against the greenhouse. Call your friends during the Super Bowl to talk about your problems. <laughs> Drive 40 miles an hour in the fast lane. Tailgate the elderly. <laughs> Make animal noises during the museum tour. Make holes in stop signs, not the ozone. Remind sunbathers that tanning became popular in the Bronze Age. Tell their irritating relatives that if life is a vacation, they are the last resort. <clears throat> no, you too, the underachiever, can stand out as a schmoozer in social circles. How may long at concerts? Eat garlic bread before going to the dentist. 
tell the host at your reception, you really enjoyed the horse doofers. You have a point. L leave a wet lo lollipop on your host's sofa. W vividly describe your gastrointestinal surgery when the entree, entree arrives. Remind people who chew ice cub cubes that they shouldn't. It will cause hockey pucks in their bladder. Stare at people through the tines of forks and pretend they're in prison. <laughs> S -s Split the bill only when your meal costs more is what you can do. Show people how to avoid confrontation. You walk a mile in the other person's shoes. Works every time because by then you're a mile away and he has no shoes. And in the world of commerce, how can you, the underachiever, stand out? I, nerdly greenback patriot, ask you, when it comes to burning ambition, be flame retardant. When someone gives you their business card, pick your teeth with it. Begin the job interview by asking about vacations, holidays, and retirement. At a convention, stare at people's name tags while you talk to them. When entering people's offices, Greet them with a loud, what are you doing? <laughs> Set a f aside a few minutes every day to yell at your boss. Create a streamlined filing system with three categories, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Eliminate shoplifting by frisking cus customers on their way out. Well, what about your career is what I, Nerdly Greenback, ask you. Have a good cry at the office once a week, then break out into song. Friday, Friday. <laughs> At 5 p.m., shout, yabba dabba do, it's quitting time. <laughs> Motivate coworkers by reminding them how dispensable they are. <laughs> Refer to them as ERHUs, short for Easily Replaceable Humanoid Units. If someone submits their resignation, talk them out of it. Then fire them. Ha ha. Ha. Think of your resume as a creative writing exercise. It's like they're really going to call Princeton and check up on you. On family day, encourage your kids to play with other employees' computers. Ask some good questions during job interviews, like, I have a real problem with capitalism. Is that going to be an issue here? Folks out there in television land, I for one say that you as a citizen and voter have rights. In democracy, every vote counts. In feudalism, every count votes. That's what happens. Remember the language of politics. Poly means many and ticks are bloodsuckers. R run for office as the candid candidate of the surprise party. <clears throat> When someone doesn't take a stand on an important issue, walk up to them and go, Bugook! As a candidate, I would investigate the private lives of reporters. This is what I'd do. Retaliate for your tax woes by filing income tax forms in Roman numerals. T take a stand on gun control, because if we ban guns, then hunters out in the woods will have painful calluses on their hands from trying to strangle deers. Not a pretty sight, is it? Young people, especially you in the balcony, my ceiling fans, remember this. We, ad we adults have given you a perfect world, so don't mess it up. And if you want to quit college because you think college is a rat race, life is a rat race. College teaches you which rat to bet on is what happens. You think college is boring? Try hanging out in the unemployment office instead, is what I say. Stay in college. College is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that comes along only once or twice in a lifetime. In conclusion, that's normally like a wake-up call for some audiences. I dreamt once I was in a faculty meeting, woke up, and sure enough, I was. <laughs> and do not forget my motto. Veni, Vidi, Velcro. I came, I saw, I stuck around. So ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for you and me. And remember, all's well that ends. Good day, good news, and good grief.
Thank you, Dr. Diffinay. Let's invite him and Nerdly to come back for just a second. Dr. Diffinay. Well, Nerdly and I have uh, told you more than we know. The subtitle is 101 Ways to Sink Your Career. And the important thing, please, is the uh, devotional scripture and prayer part of our program today. If you enjoyed this half as much as I did, then I think I probably enjoyed it twice as much as you. If I could cause some of you to smile and laugh, then this has been successful. But if I can cause you to think, then I've failed. You, you may never see, see Nerdly Greenback again. Well, can I tell him? Okay, there was a telegram last Tuesday, Wednesday. I still keep a lot of West Coast contacts. And how would you like to see Nerdly and, and me do a three, three and a half minute comedy sketch on NBC's The Tonight Show, the 4th of June? Would you like to? Would you like to see that? Would you? All right. Would you write them about that? Because uh, I've never gotten anywhere with the idea, and I am free on, on that day. Thank you very much, and remember, no sense of humor is better than none at all.